Okay, Spears and Munsell Ultra HD Benchmark Disc. Uh, this is the 2023 version. Um, so what I wanted to do is uh, take a look at the differences between uh, HDR10 and Dolby Vision. Because uh, there's been a lot of discussion about this lately. About is Dolby Vision worth it? And things like that. Um, so I bought two of these discs and the reason is is because I own a Panasonic UB9000 which I consider the best player on the market and um, I have a Revon X200 as well. I just wanted to get an idea to see how many how much difference is between these two players. Um, so yeah, uh, what I did was I recorded some things on my I just recorded on my phone but it's enough information here to give you what you need now I think I need to move my camera uh, I'm gonna need to move my camera let's just move it down here uh, for this because I don't think there's anything uh, down the bottom here that I need to uh, okay that's correct uh, then I then I need to look at it's all in the top uh, part of the screen so let's just play this it's not this scene, it's the next scene. Uh, good, we're in full screen. So this this scene right here, this is horrifically challenging for bit depth. Um, the reason is, is because this is time-lapsed and the sun is rising, I believe. I believe the sun is rising. And this, this uh, fade of orange here is just continuously fading down. Now, if, if you know anything about bit depth or anything like that, fades and things like that in the skies, they're actually incredibly difficult to do. Um, you, need to, you need really good bit depth on your TV uh, to achieve this smooth gradient look. Um, so yeah, so let's play it. Now, um, on, on Dolby Vision, so this is basically moving from here all the way down to here. You can actually see this, like just move. Now this is on Dolby Vision. And again, I know we're on a phone uh, camera and the camera's not the best and things like that. But there's no um, bit depth errors. There's no banding, there's no blocking, there's, no, no, there's none of that. So that's in Dolby Vision and I wanted to see the differences between the two. I did notice that there was differences between the two on the last disc, and, uh, but I bought this and I thought, you know, now it's a good time to start talking about this. So again, Panasonic UB9000, but now we're in HDR10, uh, the Chroma is 444. Um, with these ones, what I did was, um, I got as close to the screen as I possibly could without introducing uh, these pixels. You can just see them here. Uh, you can just see them. This is not what I'm looking for. This is fine. This is just me being at a strange angle. But you can, um, just just by having a pause screen here, can I actually move this? Um, oh, I can. Good. Oh, that's nice. That's perfect. Excellent. Oh, no, it moves back. Never mind. Um, Anyway, you can you can actually just see on this pause screen uh, that the, the bit depth is actually sensational. It's incredibly good. Um, now let's just move it though, because that's where you really see the challenge. And it just fades perfect. It, it really does fade perfectly. Um, it's. And, well, I say perfectly, um, it is not equal to the Dolby Vision version. Dolby Vision version is absolutely perfect. This is, okay, it's pretty pretty perfect. Now, in a seat, you probably couldn't see it. It would, pr it would probably just about look perfect in a seat. So, you know... Um, I can just see some lines and in uh, Dolby Vision I could not it was again absolutely perfect so now what it did was is 
I just put the second disc, uh, my other version, into the Revon X200. I've set the chroma to 444 and uh, we played the HDR10 version. Can you see all these lines? The stre the, these like streaking lines. So the, the Revon player cannot do 444 chroma, it just cannot do it. And I believe this was the same with the Oppo player as well. Uh, it just could not do this. Now maybe that's maybe that's potentially not the case this specific scene it couldn't do this but I had um, at the time when I had an Oppo I had a Vizio C1 uh, P, uh, P75 something so something like that um, and uh, I had the same issues here I had to turn essentially t either turn off 444 or I, or I had to use 444 because the TV was either not good enough or I had to do it the other way around something like that but I think the that had the same thing and the thing is they're using the same chips this is like media tech chips um, and this is really the problem that those players cannot do 444 chroma the reason this is actually a problem is because somewhere in the path the TV or the player has to put this into 444 so either the player is going to do the job or the TV will do the job so obviously this this player is unusable in 444 it's completely unusable the, these lines that that's just I mean it's from a video enthusiast point of view it's completely unacceptable um, I'll be honest I don't even know why it has the option if you can't display in 444 then why, why even give us the option to do that so um, now Revon X200 uh, HDR10 and this is 442 Right. What I found there is that it was basically perfect, though I felt 444 on the Panasonic was slightly smoother. Only by a hair, but it's slightly smoother. That would suggest to me that when you're in 442, the job that the Panasonic UB9000 is doing to 444, or my C9 to, four, uh, for, to 444, taking in a 422 signal, is about equal it's it's roughly about equal with the Panasonic to me being a little smoother it just offers more depth I felt um, so because sometimes I don't know whether to suggest 442 or 444 um, on a player and again it's because I don't I don't know how good your player is and even now I didn't really I didn't really know what to do even on the Panasonic 442 or 444 after seeing this um, and seeing both there is a slight smoothness in 444 that you don't get in 442 so I just think the pan on the Panasonic UB9000 with HDR10 that is the best thing to do so um, but again um, Dolby Vision you're not having any of that problem at all and any of the settings that you change like 10-bit 444 or anything like that on a player do not change Dolby Vision Dolby Vision is this is how it's getting sent out player settings are locked you can't change anything anyway so even if you change settings here for you know for the, on these players they're not affecting Dolby Vision anyway in, in any way shape or form so yeah so there is that um, let me close that a minute um, so that is the that is really the bit depth uh, discussion of the differences between HDR10 and Dolby Vision and whether you have a player that can actually perform the correct chroma upsampling and this is why the Panasonic UB9000 wins out in just every test that you can imagine 
because it's just so good at, play, at playing video. Uh, one of my pet peeves when I say review uh, movies and stuff, it's always bit depth and bit depth errors um, that can be seen. Now, if you see bit depth errors in Dolby Vision, then it's the source, 100%, which um, movies still have. A lot of, there's definitely low budget, um, even some high budget stuff, you can see bit depth errors in the source. Um, so, from this point of view, Dolby Vision is always best. Now, people complain that Dolby Vision is, say, darker than HDR10. Um, some of that uh, is true. Uh, it is darker. My uh, C9 measured, um, I think it was 804 nits in HDR10, and in Dolby Vision it was 700 and... I think it was 797. It was around there. So it's only a few difference in nits. However, Dolby Vision um, on discs does seem to look darker than HDR10 itself. Um, I, th I think this is to, uh, a lot to do with um, the way um, scaling from the, the nits, like let's just say something was in 4000 nits, um, there's going to be more of that content that is clipped which means if it is clipped then you are seeing more white on the screen and it just looks brighter. Um, with Dolby Vision a lot of the times, well most of the time, uh, things shouldn't clip. Um, so if you're not clipping you're not going close to the white point. So everything is always lower than the white point anyway. Um, this is why I think Dolby Vision looks uh, can look darker. Um, but, as you can see here, there's just certain things that um, I would prefer to take a slightly darker image um, and not have to deal with these bit depth errors. Um, there is just one other thing to say about these, these type of, types of errors, is that this only happens, uh, this is really only visible, Again, if you're in the right color space, you're in the right, you know, everything's correct. This is really only visible on non-grain material. And the reason is for that is because grain actually acts uh, as a, um, a, really a filler. It, it can help fill in the gaps here. And there's just certain things you can't see uh, by doing that. For some reason, I'm forgetting the term right now. But um, yeah, it uh, it really does on on film grain content. I can you cannot you just can't see this. You you would just even on this content if you added noise, which is how an encoder sees film grain. You you're not going to see you and you. I couldn't even pick up on this. It'd just be impossible to pick up on. Now the errors on the Revon. Uh, X200 with the 444, that will always be visible because it just, um, I can see it in the clouds on some of the other content on this disc. So, um, the ter that's it, the term was dither, right? Um, film grain and any noise film grain helps dither this, um, blends it and smooths it. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's enough discussion, I think, about that. Uh, so this is really the bit depth discussion here. And Dolby Vision just simply has better bit depth. Now, um, I've heard people say in some YouTube videos and things like that, that you can only really take advantage of bit depth the higher in brightness you go. Um, well, this is, this is disproving that. Because um, Dolby Vision just simply has better processing whether it is due to actual 12-bit itself or just the processing on the chip, uh, it just simply looks better. Um, and better, I, would, I, mean, I mean perfect. Um, you know, this, um, this is perfect in Dolby Vision. So, again, so the reason why 
Um, I don't see this though in real world content is because a lot of the stuff I watch is film based content. It is not actually pure digital, grainless, noiseless or anything like that. So, um, you know, maybe don't need to go as hard as you think with this, but again, if I had the choice of a, a Revon X200 and a Panasonic UB9000, which costs the same, why would I pick up a Revon instead of a Panasonic? Why? This is just better at picture quality in Dolby Vision and in HDR10. So why would I, you know what I mean? Like, I, I just, for me, if I'm buying a player, I want to buy the, I want to find out which one's the best. Um, I really bought this to see how good it was. And uh, after really about three months of use, of using it, uh, I couldn't compete. It, I just went back to this. Could not compete whatsoever. So um, now uh, this is slightly, slightly under. Um, uh, it's not really the same subject. Um, so well, I guess it is. It, it is in some ways uh, related to Dolby Vision and, and HDR10. Uh, so this is the opening scene from uh, the Spears and Munson mon montage. So, um, just really quick, I just want to inform you what's going on here. The hardest content that you could ever do is in this, in this, uh, for bit depth and, and, and everything, is in this opening scene. And some people might think, well, this is actually really easy. It's not. Um, it's because you are fading light from almost, well, very low levels of light into extremely high levels of light, and it's just a smooth fade, right? This is Dolby Vision, by the way. It's just completely smooth. It opens up and it's completely smooth. So uh, now this is on. This is on a. That was on a Panasonic UB9000. Uh, the opening uh, fade scene, uh, Dolby Vision. Yep. Now this is on a Panasonic UB9000 um, HDR10. I hope you can see the difference here. Um, if you can't, I will explain what is actually happening. Because um, now you in the corners here. So in the corners here, you you can see light pulsing pulsing, pulsing, pulsing around here. Um, it just looks as though it's, it's pushing bands of lines out. Now, um, I had to put my camera in auto exposure to even capture this. And even on this video, it doesn't do it justice at all. You might, because you might look at this and like, I can't, I can't really see that. So I'm going to explain. Every time, this is again, it's uh, sped up, but it's it's still very, very smooth. This light that's getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And there's just, I'm not going to say banding lines, but I'm just, they, they, that's what they look like. They're pulsing out light, pulsing out light, pulsing out light. And it just looks really bad. Now, um, again, this does not happen um, in Dolby Vision mode. Um, now let's have a look at the Panasonic, the uh, the X two hundred, the Revon. Um, I can just see, I can see them in this corner. It's just pulsing out. And again, I apologise for this video not being as um, you know as good. It's just this. <laughs> This was impossible for me to capture. So I put my ISO on the phone to a particular level. And if it was too high, I couldn't see the intro because um, it would bl black out all of the, the intro and you couldn't see any of the banding lines. And all you could see is say this part. And then once you got past this part, it crushed everything else out. It's just really difficult to see. So all I'll tell you is that uh, this scene in Dolby Vision on my C9 
is completely flawless. It, it introduces light perfectly smooth, and in HDR10 it doesn't. Now, I did send an email to um, Stacy Spears about this, and he said um, it actually is an, it, it's an error in the C9. Um, and I don't think the next generation, the CX and the rest of them actually do this. Um, but again, Dolby Vision really covers up a lot of issues that are potentially uh, weaknesses in TVs. Um, it really does. And if I had to lose, if I had to lose 100 nits of brightness to gain this, I would. Um, with respect to that, if this is just say a TV bug and things like that, and say the modern generations and especially the new ones, they absolutely do not have that. They have improved bit depth anyway over my C9, things like that. A lot of this is really gonna like if you're if you played this disc and you had say a C3 or a G3 from uh, 2023 this year, I don't see I don't think you're gonna see any you're not gonna see the opening issue fade like this, and you're not gonna see the issue with uh, the the banding and the bit depth errors. Um, you just not gonna, I just don't think you're gonna see it because these minor improvements that they're making every single year to these TVs. Uh, I, mean, I mean, even, um, uh, you know, nit scaling, you know, they're, they're able to uh, optimize uh, the HDR image now so well, uh, you know, on the new, newer TVs. But again, anything weaker, I mean, I'm buying a, an LG C9, which at the time was, uh, you know, top, top end TV. But imagine someone that's not buying, say, they're not buying an OLED and they're not buying um, the top three brands, LG, Sony or Samsung. Imagine you're buying one of the lower guys. You have to rely now on their processing, on their TV, and it's probably not perfect. This is, again, why Dolby Vision is so good uh, for people that don't, uh, that buy weak, weak displays, really, because you're getting the the excellence of a Dolby Vision chip um, that covers up so many potential issues that you could have. Now, uh, even though this this looked small, it's not small when it's on my screen. It's 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 honestly unwatch for me. It's almost unwatchable uh, like this. Um, but I have never seen this opening fade. I've never seen it in a movie, and I've been watching the. C9 for like two and a half, three years. Never seen that. I've never seen that type of thing. And the bit depth errors, um, for me, I've seen them in Dolby Vision and HDR10. And a lot of the stuff I watch is film. So again, it's dithered anyway. And you can't really see that. So uh, I'm making an argument for Dolby Vision in one respect. Um, that you, it's almost essential, but in real world content, um, you know, it it may not it may not be the big deal. Uh, you know, this content is made to, is designed to stress displays, bit depth, everything, and uh, it shows weaknesses. So the thing is, I'm one of those types of people that once I've seen weaknesses in my display, it's like, okay, maybe it's time for a new one, you know, a new TV now. So, um, yeah. Uh, now, let's get on to uh, the actual 8, but it's, it, this is, uh, well, I've called it 8-bit, but some of this should not be 8-bit. Um, so this isn't a video portion. This is just uh, some screenshots here. So uh, this is uh, this is SDR content. Now, most players playing SDR cannot play SDR in 10 bit. Now, for me, that's unacceptable. And uh, one of the reasons why is um, so for a few dollars more. This is by Kino Lorber on 4K. This is an SDR. And a lot of people like poo-poo SDR saying it's like, oh, I can't, what's the point in buying it if it's SDR? But it's still in 10-bit. Uh, to me, it looks it looks as good 
um, as, as any other 4K, and I reviewed this at 5 out of 5, I thought it was perfect. This one also, um, SDR, looked absolutely incredible. Um, so to discard uh, SDR and 8-bit content, you can, in my opinion, you just cannot do that. So, um, this, so this is on the Revon, and you can go to the extra media information by holding the uh, the info button uh, for longer. Uh, now, this is what's this is supposed to be what it's getting off of the disc. This is the media information off of the disc. Yes, it's in SDR. Yes, we're in BT uh, 709. 420, we're perfect so far. But look, we have 8-bit color depth here. That means it's downscaling 10-bit information to 8-bit. Why would I want that loss? I just don't know. Now, the same test pan on a Panasonic UB9000. 24p SDR, Rec7, well, it's BT709, 420, 10-bit, and I'm chroma upsampling to 44412. This is real. The, the 12 bit here is really immaterial. Whether it's 10 or 12, it doesn't matter. Um, I've seen zero difference between the two. Again, the player's got to either do this to 12 bit or the TV will do it to 12 bit. And I think from what I'm seeing, both are equal. Um, but. With the history of Panasonic doing incredible Chroma 444, and it's just better than the C9 um, at doing that, I would I trust this uh, also at doing 12-bit perfectly as well. So you just got the full, you just max everything out on a Panasonic UB9000. But again, SDR content 10-bit, 10-bit, and 10-bit uh, with SDR content allows you to see gradients that are perfect. You should not see banding and bit depth errors in, in SDR on 4K Ultra HD, like this, uh, with this setting. Now, um, so Dolby Vision, um, so th the next one is Dolby Vision, right? Now, um, let's go to this screen first on the, on the Panasonic UB9000. This is 60 frames per second. Dolby Vision. I've never seen Dolby Vision in 60 frames per second ever before. But we've got 12-bit. It understands that the source was 12-bit and it's outputting 12-bit. So um, the Revon, it's outputting 8-bit. Now, it, so this is this is Dolby Vision. We've got all this great uh, great color, uh, BT 2020. Everything like that, but we've down we're downscaling this from basically 12 bit to 8 bit. I mean, I I, just, I can't accept that. Now, in, in somewhat defence, do I watch 60 frames per second content? No, I don't. <laughs> uh, I I think for video games. Certain animations as well, like I actually like, I prefer actually watching Big Buck Bunny um, from Blender, or um, I think, I think, yeah, um, I prefer to watch that in 60 because I got so used to watching that in 60, I could not go back to 30 frames per second. I, cu I couldn't do it. Um, to me, it, look, it actually, that judder um, of 30 frames per second, I just, I could not. I just couldn't watch it, regardless about that. When it comes to movies, I only watch things in, in 24 frames. Uh, this is, um, for the most part, for the most part, it is immaterial. The, the problem is, though, is again, is I have a player for $1,000 here and a player for $1,000 there. Why would I pick this player up that can't do everything that I want it to do? Uh, from playing SDR, even potentially playing Dolby Vision in 60 frames per second, hey, one day I might, there might be a release with that. I don't think there is any. I think all the 60 frames per second content stuff that was done by Sony was at HDR, not Dolby Vision, I, th I think. Gemini Man and um, Billy Linz, is it? 
I think they were SDR, because at the time I don't think Sony was doing Dolby Vision. It took them a while to jump on board to Dolby Vision. Um, and their encodes for Dolby Vision are absolutely incredible. Um, okay, yeah, getting sidetracked a little there, but um, yeah, we're, we're, we're keeping the Panasonic UB9000s allows things to be kept in its native uh, bit uh, depth, and uh, its chrome rub sampling is just absolutely incredible. So. There, these are just some of the differences I'm seeing um, with these players and with this disc, really. And uh, for me, um, I'm not spending, you know, crazy amounts of money on these 4K players. But again, if, if you've got the choice, uh, why would I buy a um, MediaTek chip player, Pioneer? Um, who are the MediaTek uh, people? A uh, Revon, you know. I think Revon. Um, I think they're releasing another player. I think it's like Magnavox or something like that, as well. And I do think it has some uh, good uh, uh, home streaming capability, file playback, and things like that. But um, the video processing from this player just cannot be beat. Um, and it uh, alleviates some of the differences between Dolby Vision and HDR10. It really does. So uh, I just thought I'd talk about this as well. Uh, this is um, this is the HDR optimizer in the Panasonic UB9000. So let me just see what you can see here. I just want to know if you can. Uh, let me see in full screen what you can see. Okay, I think we're good here. So, um, I will say this again. Um, my the, what I'm taking the pictures here with is um, on a phone, and um, even when you're using uh, any IS, uh, ISO you like, which is uh, either bringing down the brightness or things like that, it still has a limited range. So. The difference here between, so this is off, right? Uh, this is uh, with the HDR optimizer off, and it's just really a white steaming mess, right? When you put this on, uh, you just get more definition back uh, here. Now again, this is, this is insanely obvious when you're in the room. My, my phone just can't, doesn't have the dynamic range to pull out all of this information. And it's like some of the other things that I've shown you today. It, on the screen, it just looks incredibly worse, or, um, or in this case, better and better and worse. So, um, now this is uh, again. This so this is on, um, and the the skies and the mount that you can't really see make, see the definition of the mountain line here with it off right it's getting clipped completely clipped out most of this on the screen when I'm I'm looking at it is completely clipped out you j and you get much more color with the optimizer when it's on it, it even the skies uh, sorry uh, the these skies the blue look at this bl the blue is getting completely washed out um, and when it's on, it's just got so much more control. So now again, uh, this um, there are two. Like it looks as though there's two mountains here, right? There's one. There's one here, and then a little bit further in the background, there's there. This is on. When it's off, it just it just gets washed out. The whole image just gets washed out. And it's not just that, um, the colors get washed out as well. So uh, the greens and the orange, I think my camera's down here, doesn't matter. There's um, the oranges here, they get completely washed out when it's off. Now this optimizer is set to OLED and on a Panasonic UB9000, 
OLED means 1000 nits. For me, uh, if you're putting out content on 4K, not, not on this disc. This disc is done because it needs to test certain things. But for me, when you're putting out content that is HDR, um, I mean, you, you maybe even could go lower than a thousand. Oh, and I would never go above a thousand nits because um, if you don't have tone mapping and this content is going to be displayed on Jimmy's TV down the road and Jimmy did down the road can only do 400 nits and uh, Mike down the road, well, he can do, he can do 1,200 nits. It's all just going to look too different. You need to have some type of standard that does this. Now, the benefit of this player is that it doesn't matter because if Sony releases a disc and it's got 4,000 nits on it, uh, it doesn't actually matter at all. You can turn on the optimizer and it puts everything into a uh, 1,000 nit container, we'll say. And it's just so much better. Um, okay, now this is a prime example of my camera being really, really bad and limited. If you've seen this scene, it is intensely colourful here. The, the amount of colour in this shot, we're over, this looks totally overexposed. And we have so much colour in this shot, it's absolutely incredible. Um, again, uh, the difference is just not being displayed on my phone, so I do apologise for this. But uh, the the biggest, the I guess the biggest thing you can say just just on here is the difference here uh, in the colour here, and it really does affect colour. It puts more juice into the colour, the more pop into those colours. I wish I you wish really wish I could have. Um, maybe done this in a different way, but um, still, uh, again, we are, we are, we're clipping out detail here with it off, and with it on, we don't have that. Again, if the the range was uh, bigger, it it really would have helped. So, uh, yeah, that's just, just just some of the things I wanted to talk about uh, with this, and that is. Uh, yeah, well, the differences between Dolby Vision, HDR10, uh, and player setup. So, number one, if you do not have a Panasonic UB9000 or a Panasonic 4, I think it's the 420, or is it the A20? Um, well, any, to be honest, any of the Panasonics, really. Panasonics, you can use 444 Chroma. Um, and if you have a weaker display, it covers up a lot of that because all the work's being done for you. This is the great thing about this player. If you have any other player that is not a Panasonic, 100% put it into 422 right away. If you're putting it in 442, there is potential, potential there for errors, and especially if they're MediaTek chip players, which most of them actually are. Um, you know, uh, I, I just, you know, they are. Uh, I would uh, I would strongly consider ch making that change. 422 uh, allows even on, even on a Revon to look very close, uh, very close to Dolby Vision. And uh, something to be said again about that is, in real world content with film grain, with noise and things like that, some of this you're really not going to see anyway. But I am one of those people that are chasing as much performance as possible uh, without spending. Um, I heard, uh, um, I, th I think I heard um, Stacey Spears talk the other day in an interview on YouTube about this, and that is uh, getting a mad VR processor um, and turning off Dolby Vision and letting the processor do it all. Um, now, I'll be honest, I think that process is like $10,000 or something. And I can't justify paying $10,000 for, for that when it is just straight up cheaper to say, can you please play this disc in Dolby Vision? You know, um, and again, this is on a test disc. So me watching a movie, there's movies... Um, there's just movies I 
just have never ever seen this with especially film transfers I've seen some of the best transfers this year in 2023 that are HDR10 um, not Dolby Vision at all heavy film grain but the transfers are absolutely tremendous and it looks incredible so um, uh, I'm <laughs> One, one minute I'm advertising the fact that, hey, everything does need to be Dolby Vision because it, you know, covers up weaknesses in TVs, which it really does. And on the other hand, in real world cases, most of the time you should be, you should be okay with this. Now, just, uh, I know I'm going on a lot here. I watched uh, The Batman when it first came out. The first night I watched it was in HDR. And the second night I watched it was in Dolby Vision. And there's a scene uh, maybe 75% of the way through that movie where I th um, all the lights go out and all you see is gunfire, lights go out. Gunfire, lights go out. Gunfire, lights go out. Now in that scene, Dolby Vision just straight up looks better because the black floor, it brought the black floor all the way down to almost black. But in HDR10, the blacks were like raised slightly and it had, um, it just didn't look as controlled. So I think for the regular person down the street that isn't spending tens of thousands of dollars on processors and having these extremely extravagant setups, that are out of reach for pretty much everybody and even for people like me that I'm looking for the best picture quality and things like that they're just it's just out of reach for me uh, and again Dolby Vision just covers that up so well you know so uh, with, digi with digital content yeah let's say this with digital content grainless grain, uh, and that uh, I think Dolby Vision is definitely um, it's definitely it would definitely improve a lot of things um, there was uh, one movie um, that didn't though it was released this year uh, let me just see what it is Universal 4K uh, what was it if I can't f ah, here we go Puss in Boots. This was HDR10. This was digital and it had zero bit depth errors. <laughs> it was just absolutely incredible. I, I, I don't know how they did this. Well, I mean, there's a few ways that you potentially could do it. From an encoding point of view, there are actually things that you can do to improve uh, digital content. Uh, one is the AQ modes um, in in X two six five the codec, uh, the AQ modes. If you use AQ mode three, it actually helps with um, gradients and banding, and um, it also helps with the uh, black levels as well. So I found that a strength of one point seven completely eliminates banding from my tests that I've been doing with grainless content. So there is that. Um, RDOQ is another setting that you can use and I felt as though you only needed 0.4 for that very light amounts of uh, RDOQ because if you go too high um, it uh, actually uh, you lose accuracy um, RDOQ say in this scene this scene for instance right uh, because this is grainless encode the encoding software tends to under bit rate these because they it, it's almost equal this is the, all this is almost equal with audio Q um, it um, it allows you to push more bits into these areas just push more and uh, after doing that I found that you just don't get any bit depth there as any ever in digital content even on my C9, which is imperfect in HDR10. The last thing uh, you can do with the uh, encoding software is, I think it's intra-smoothing. 
if you turn on intrasmoothing, it it almost does exactly what it, it says. It does blend and smooth things uh, even further. The uh, issue with that is potentially you could lose detail. This is why I don't use it, and I got away with just using the AQ mode 3, 1.7, and RDO Q 0.04. 0 I got away with it on some of the tests I was doing. Th these must be doing something similar because there's just no bit depth errors in this. So, uh, yeah. So, um, this is probably a long video, I know. But um, number one is uh, I just wanted to put a video out there saying what actually are the differences between Dolby Vision and HDR10. Um, in demo disc scenes like this, they're actually significant. In real world content, potentially not so much, especially if it's associated with film grain, which even Disney even Disney animation, right, has a very light film grain in it, which actually helps dither anyway. So um, one thing Dolby Vision is good for, though, is controlling blacks, controlling um, the amount of light output on the screen. I do think it is better than better for that, things like that. Um, so, but the, one of the biggest things is if you don't have access to Dolby Vision, 100% make sure you are in the correct um, color space um, or chro chroma 444 or 442 442 is always the safe bet even if you had a Panasonic UB9000 it's pretty much safe unless your TV is terrible then please force 444 which um, there might be an auto I think there's an auto mode on the Panasonic um, that you know, you could just set everything up a auto if you want, if you wanted to. I think it just would force 12-bit 444 in most situations, apart from 60 frames per second content. It would probably drop bit depth then. But um, yeah, I also wanted to yeah show you the differences between these players, which players can actually play SDR correctly, uh, and also uh, just something I did not know is. Um, the Revon is downscaling 12-bit to 8-bit with 60 frames per second content on this disc. And, um, you know, uh, small small use case, yeah, I know, but you never know. There might be something I actually really enjoy at 60 frames per second um, down the road, <laughs> you know, <laughs> probably not, but uh, again, the, the differences between these players uh, just is pretty striking uh, at getting the best my, my goal here is to with uh, with home theater since I was 10 12 years old is to always get the highest quality thing that I can um, and having access to a Panasonic UB9000 or the cheaper model I think it's the 820 they both have the same processing so you know they both had the same processing, so it's no big deal if you had uh, the other one. They're both absolutely incredible. So, one thing to say here as well, though, is um, this player does have HDR10+. Plus. So if you actually had a Samsung, then you, have, you take advantage of this too, even on this player. And things that do not have uh, tone mapping, you know, you can use the HDR optimizer as well. It really, it just, for me, that for me, a Panasonic player is mandatory if you are chasing the highest picture quality that you can on 4K. So I don't think there's going to be another player released. Um, like they're not, I, my assumption is they're not going to do like a version two and this will be improved. Uh, you know, we can actually use streaming apps that, um, that are actually high quality and things like that. It's not going to be an all-in-one box. And that's the thing. If you want something that's excellent, most of the time it is a standalone product, uh, you know, something, uh, an item pro a product to buy. The Panasonic UB9000 is a 4K player. You can play CDs on it, sure. 
you can do all this other stuff on it but its main purpose is a 4k player and it cannot be beaten um, so yeah I think I've said enough now uh, great disc by the way uh, yeah amazing the uh, just to talk about the uh, the, the uh, montage the montage is even better than the first one color grading is better the level of detail is better and the first disc is still considered a reference disc I would still consider it a reference disc even though this one's out um, this one just pushes the bar just so much further um, it's just incredible now there's tons of test patterns on this disc and I think a lot of people are getting overwhelmed with it and even I had to like think for a second there's a lot of patterns on here that are not made for me they're made for like testers and you know what let's test this and see how it looks on the display oh we can improve that um, like engineers um, a lot of the test patterns to me um, are not really usable but it doesn't matter because this disc still has the basics on there for anyone that just wants the basics black levels color um, contrast are you crushing things like that then it also has uh, Dolby Atmos DTSX uh, setups and things like that for volume and everything like that to get your channel trims correct so you know yes it has all these extra stuff on it but don't get too don't get too crazy about well I have to check everything and I'm like well I don't understand it I don't know how to use it really just stay in in the first in each disc stay on the first couple of rows because they're the basic sections get those right you know black levels color get you get those right and all this other stuff is kind of like you know you, you don't really need to know how it works unless you really want to go after it and say you know what I want to learn all this that's great then you can that's what this that's the beauty about this disc is you can start right at the beginning and uh, well there's no end to it you know to the amount of knowledge that you can actually get from this disc um, so yeah uh, I support anybody uh, these guys especially that push out content that is of the highest quality that you can get this disc does that uh, this is one of the reasons yes I wanted uh, two discs anyway but I don't mind I don't mind supporting projects and things like this that just have a fascination and love for picture quality um, they've even gone pretty crazy on the sound too and the Spears and Munsell are really not known generally speaking to be sound guys but even the work they've done on sound is tremendous too so yeah uh, I think that's about it I think I've said enough um, so w from your experience with Dolby Vision and HDR10 is it a big deal are you using a display kind of like my C9 where some most a lot of the times especially with modern content it just things just do look better in Dolby Vision than HDR10 it just looks more controlled um, now I know there's like you know licensing and Dolby Vision costs more and things like that but uh, you know it, it the the ultimate for me is getting a movie that is on Dolby Vision it's not the end of the world if it isn't because you can still I've reviewed this at five out of five perfect discs that did not have that either it's just it's almost like the icing on the cake is Dolby Vision and you just know then that you're getting things to look exactly as they should really on your display so you know uh, but yeah uh, your experience with this please uh, I'd like to know in the comments uh, if you have this uh, what do you think to the disc um, and yeah differences between different display formats and things like that uh, 444 were you using 444 on your player and now you're rethinking it uh, especially if you don't have a Panasonic 
uh, things like that. Um, you know, I just hope this helps. Um, so I'll hopefully do a few more videos like this, uh, just looking into this Spears and Munsell disc, but maybe going over the basics because, um, you know, even some of this stuff is like, you know, it's just, it's just way above uh, what I know uh, anyway. So um, I do like to th try and make things as simple as possible if I can. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, what do you think? Um, let me know and uh, yeah, have a good day. Appreciate you watching and uh, yeah, bye.